Hello, my name is Nancy Nowak and I'm a pastel artist. Uh, we pastel artists are very lucky for we have a multitude of papers and surfaces to paint on. And one paper I love and use often is your sanded paper. Um, I prefer the 400 grade. It just has the perfect amount of grittiness for me. Uh, you can also buy UR paper pre-mounted, but I prefer to do it myself for I find it a lot more cost effective that way. And since I go through a lot of paper, it saves me a fortune. So when I paint, I do a lot of wet underpaintings. And I prefer to have um, a mounted sheet so my paper doesn't buckle. I don't have to worry about taping down the edges or the edges crumpling. And truthfully, I just prefer working on a solid surface. So um, it just makes me feel better when I paint. So I thought I would do a, a video on my process of mounting paper. Mounting paper to acid-free foam core board. Okay, here's the supplies needed. I'll need a ruler, some mat cutters, pencil. I use a brayer uh, that's come later in the process. That's optional. I just find it easier. There's also my paper and of course my uh, foam core that is acid free. Okay, first thing I do is I lay out my big piece of board. I like to do several at a time. I don't wanna just mount one piece. And I lay it out. Just lay it out all over your board. I'm kind of thinking um, as many sheets as I possibly can get on my surface. If I do one, two, I'll follow it like this. One, two, three, one, two, three. Sort of like a cookie cutter. You know, cutting out cookies on dough and trying to get as many cookies out as possible. <laughs> Foam core, acid free foam core is a little bit more pricier than a regular foam core board. So I like to use as much, I get as much sheets as I possibly can out of it. Okay. So there I go. The next step is taking my pencil. And what I do at this point once I have it laid out really nicely, I like to take a pencil and draw around my paper. This way, when I start spraying, I'll know where my paper lies. So quickly, I just take my pencil and just very quickly go around it. I wanna make sure there is enough margin space in between each paper that I'll be able to cut it out easily. And I won't go over the edges. I don't wanna butt up against the edge because once I start gluing it down, it's gonna be very difficult to um, get it back exactly onto an edge. So I like to leave plenty of space around it. And just Continue making pencil marks all around. Oh, oops. Got on my paper. No worries because it's just going to be covered up. There we go. I keep doing that, huh? By mounting several at a time, I am always ready to go. If I'm doing a plein air event, I'll be taking a whole uh, bunch of these boards with me. Um, I'll take a bunch of my 9 by 12 frames with a bunch of my 9 by 12 pre-cut sheets, and I'll be all set um, to pop them in. Or if I just go out plein air painting, I'll be able to just grab a bunch of boards and take with me 
They're all pre-mounted. I don't have to worry about it before I paint. I'm inspired to paint. Um, I could just grab a board and go and get in, get into it real quick. Okay, so when we take them off, we'll have it all lined out. Okay, next step. Okay, the next step is that I'm outside because I'm going to be spraying my photo mount and I don't want to asphyxiate myself and have all that spray in my studio. So I'm outside, I have a piece of just old paper, craft paper on the bottom. I have my board laid out. And the first thing I do is I'm going to spray, shake this up really well and I'm gonna spray inside my squares. So I'm gonna start off about this far away and I do a light coat, light coat. And I spray, I'm really concentrating on getting all those edges really well. Not too, not too heavy a coat, but nice and light because we can go over it. really trying hard not to breathe this in. Okay, I wait a, just a half a minute or so, let it just dry, and I'm going to go over it with another coat. <coughs> so I just want a nice, even, coating. Okay. Step is I'm laying out all my paper back onto the craft paper and I'm going to spray the backs of it, making sure that it is the back and not the front of my paper. And I'm going to do the same process. Light coat, nice and even, all the way around. Really paying attention to make sure I got the edges of my paper, because I don't want those edges to pull up. in another another minute I want to make sure I have enough adhesive on it but in light coats so I'll do two coats on the back of my paper and two coats on my uh, foam core again making sure I really got those edges inside and I had to be careful because both sides this and this is sticky but not so sticky where I can't really where it's really stuck to my fingers but now I'm going to really pay attention and try to stick these back into the squares I drew because I know I sprayed them really well inside these squares so again I'm going to just Take my paper, follow my outline. If it sticks a little bit on the outside, it's okay. This 
point, it's stuck on, but I want to really make sure that it is flush and stuck on so well that it's not going to come off and that it's nice and smooth. So that's where my brayer comes in. I'm going to really just roll this with a lot of pressure and go around the edges, making sure those edges are really stuck down. Making sure each piece is rolled down. part of your board got really sticky and you may not want that stickiness on your brayer. So you can take a sheet of glassine and just stick it over. This is an old sheet, but stick it over so I don't have to get the stickiness right on my brayer. So you can roll it out also by doing that. So right now, these paper is really stuck on stuck on well, and all I have to do now is cut it out. Um, so now I'm going to really make sure I'm gonna see those edges. So I take a pencil line and I just take my pencil and feed and butt it up against the sheets of paper and make a dark line around this. And you can see it goes right on top because it's you can really feel that indentation of the paper. Okay. Now with a new, fresh, sharp blade, I'm going to take my ruler and find that nice edge that my pencil line is showing me. And now I'm gonna butt the blade right up against the paper. I can kind of, I feel it, that blade up against the paper and the ruler. And then lightly score. I lightly score first to give the blade a crevice to go into, and now I'm gonna be much heavier pressure, more heavier. But this foam core cuts like butter, so it's really, really forgiving. I don't wanna cut this way into my paper, or have the ruler outside my paper because it's so easy for this blade to just skip and go right into my sanded surface, and I don't want to do that. So I'm always going to put the blade on the inside of my paper. I see that pencil line now. Butt it up. Butt it up. And you really can feel it. Light score. Light score. Light score. A little bit heavier pressure. And now, heavy pressure. I'm going to connect the two. And look how nice. Okay. And now it's just a matter of going around. My paper. Feeling it. And again, I don't want to press too hard the first time because again, my blade might slip and with heavy pressure, it might go right into my thumb and cut my thumb, which I have done. So light pressure, a little stronger pressure, strong pressure. All the way around. I really want to see my line better. Ruler butt up, butt up.
have my perfectly mounted board. All ready to paint. Now, you can also begin to paint with some of the foam core showing so that you could clip it to your easel um, and paint on it and have something that you can have, you know, something clipped on. I find then once I do my painting, I still have to go back and cut it and I don't want to put a ruler on top of a beautifully painted piece. So that is why I cut it two size from the beginning. But that's my preference. You might find it something different. Uh, if you do do this and you really feel like you need foam core here or the board to, to, uh, to clip things on to use as a clipper, you can always take a piece of glassine over your painting, use your ruler like this, and then cut. Another big advantage to having your sanded paper uh, pre-mounted is that once you finish your painting, it's all set for framing. So it's stiff, it's on a nice board, it's cut to size. Now all I'll need is my molding and it'll just fit in just perfectly right in here. And it makes it that much easier. And you can see, well, once I put in my glass, my spacers, my dust cover and frame it up correctly, um, it'll make that process go so much easier. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on mounting paper. Please feel free to make a comment below and visit my website, nancynowak.com. Thank you.